Hey everyone, I'm Jahan Alvani, the manager of infrastructure engineering here at Zulily. Welcome to creating a DIY monitoring culture. This is definitely a culture talk. It's about what we found and how we're gaining success in our environment. I'm not gonna have a ton of code or a whole lot of graphs. Um, we've got other great presenters that will dive more into the technical side. I'm definitely talking about how we've gained success um, with our people and uh, kind of coaching the team to get to the right point. So diving in, Zulily is an online retailer with a really complex business model. We bring back the joy of shopping, unique finds from brands you love at prices that you'll want to brag about. Uh, someone described it to me as bringing the feeling of going to the mall and kind of window shopping into the digital space. And our customers love that we often have unique items that you can't find anywhere else. We're a platform through which our merchant and vendor partners, some are well-known brands like Crayola, KitchenAid, and Star Wars, as well as smaller boutique makers, can create sales, list, and sell their own product. Sales events are time-bound, usually three days, but might be as short as 24 hours. Merchants can create their own events, and we can create events as well. I kind of think of this as creating um, like displays in a department store or to go back to the uh, analogy before, like in a, in a physical mall, uh, you might have a display that's seasonal and highlighting seasonal products, or you might have a display that's um, highlighting a particular manufacturer or brand. From a technical standpoint, we tend to build a lot of our own tools because the nature of our business doesn't lend itself well to white labeled or packaged software. Vendors and partners will sometimes seed our fulfillment centers with product in advance of a sale but it often arrives just in time or is even brought to our fulfillment center post-sale. In those cases, we'll take the orders and transmit them to the vendor, and the vendor will either manufacture just in time or will ship them from their warehouses to ours to ship out to our customers. So what does infrastructure engineering do? I joined Zulily a little over a year ago. And we run several services that are used across tech and a few that are used across the business. Think Jira, Confluence, our code repo and CICD platform. We have some messaging relays and a few other services that we run. All of our customers are internal customers. And in an on-premise life, several years ago, this team was also responsible for most, if not all, of monitoring at Zulily, which is how we got to be inserted into this conversation. Now this slide speaks to broader trends in tech culture, but I'll talk about Zulily. Some, some orgs define languages and frameworks that they deem important, but other orgs will lean into the constantly evolving nature of technology, and Zoo tends to be more of the latter. We have several verticals, we call them communities in the tech department, store, fulfillment center systems, supply chain systems, data machine learning and personalization, the merchant and vendor platform, and the vertical that my team sits in, infrastructure, services, and security. Now, Zulily's culture empowers teams to find the best tool for their job, and there's not a lot of friction to go implement. Each community might make use of some common technologies and some very different technologies, and implementations can vary dramatically. You'll notice that I say empowered teams choose the best tool for their needs. We used to talk a lot about best of breed, but the industry I think has kind of moved past that. Understanding that there's a vast spectrum of needs and use cases, and there's a similar spectrum of products and technologies to meet those needs. And that same idea applies at the you know, company level, but it also applies at the team level. And in our case, it's a real challenge. I mean, the logo soup that you see to the right is just a subset of the tools and platforms that we build on. But we still have a need for consistent monitoring and reporting, especially while reporting up and reporting out. <laughs> so as I was going through my 90 day plan, just after joining, I was talking to my leadership, peers, customers, there's a lot to take in and it's kind of daunting. But as I went over in the last slide, this is a common discussion I've had with my peers and other companies. I'm sure some of you are nodding your heads now. Personally, it gives me an opportunity to help be an organizer, which is something that I really enjoy. So when I was thinking about what are we trying to accomplish, I went back to a few of our principles. In this case, one of our goals is to harness collective knowledge 
I might have some fairly green engineers on my team who have only seen per device or instance monitors. He might not be, have been in a position where he's been able to identify service degradation as opposed to a service outage. And folks on, we might have folks on other teams who've worked in service oriented architectures for years and who have deep experience with more modern tool sets. Our goal is to empower people in all areas of the org to level up the whole team. And one of our mottos is we don't want to be gatekeepers. It's in keeping with our culture, we want people to be empowered to move forward without engaging us as much as possible. We're a small team and being engaged in every request is going to eat up a lot of our time, as well as slow down the other teams. I mean, if we're not providing a lot of value, they would much prefer to be able to do things on their own. So we don't want a heavy process of being inserted into every service modification or monitoring change. Now, this slide is a little bit of pre-work and it'll be a different approach for each person in this position in each organization. So I'm not gonna spend a ton of time here, but I will say that starting with a place of mutual trust is super important, especially if you don't have a mandate to work on this from leadership. In our case, we didn't. My team and a few peers saw an opportunity that life would be better if we spent some time building some guidance. And we knew that to be effective, we'd need broad buy-in from across the teams. And I'll spend a little bit more uh, time on this later on. Importantly, number two, we decentralized communication. While my team's happy to help with kind of how should I type questions, it's better to foster collaboration across teams. So we created a Slack channel where all of the interested parties from across the communities are encouraged to discuss how they're using the tools and what they're learning. In the case of Datadog, we invited our account team as single channel guests. They help with best practices, they bring in feature announcements, they provide documentation if we can't find it, and they help to drive support tickets. It's been super popular and it helps that we have a really kind of nice, good account team. We often see interactions uh, where for example, team A learns, out, learns about a feature set and shares it with team B. Like, hey, I, knew, I know you were getting frustrated with how your existing log monitoring is working. Have you looked at these features? Or has a broader question, like who has used, uh, who has used the Datadog Terraform provider? And maybe a useful conversation follows without needing a long back and forth with our team to connect some dots from across the organization. So, I mentioned uh, getting broad buy-in. We did this by creating a cross-functional squad. We seeded this group with folks from all over tech, mostly from operational roles, DevOps, SREs, people from all parts of the infrastructure services and security community. And the idea is to create a team focused on defining best practices for monitoring and then evangelizing those best practices back among our comprising teams. So to start with, we focused on our services, on our service catalogs. Um, to be totally frank, our service catalogs weren't in great shape. In some cases, we relied heavily on oral histories to know who to engage in what situations and what details they might like to see. Service catalogs might be in several locations, formats. They might occasionally have been out of date. Sometimes responsibilities had shifted among teams or new teams had uh, been created and that wasn't reflected in the catalogs. Have a service catalog, keep it up to date. It seems really basic, but it's critical. It should list the teams responsible for services and how to engage them. And in most cases, the how to engage part will be fairly consistent. Um, and sometimes, sometimes it might not be. I'll give you an example. Most of our services are fairly straightforward. If you need to engage the supporting team, you, there's a link to uh, the pager duty service and you can create an incident against that service. We have a few services that are supported by third parties, and some of them only monitor email distributions. In that case, we list the email distribution and tell kind of set expectations around what response time is like for this service. Finally, take the time to get good baselines. You can't tell when a service is unhealthy if you don't know what healthy looks like. To that point, for example, We focus a lot on high level business metrics and we spend some time upfront thinking about them. My leadership cares a lot about conversion rate, items per order and shipment for velocity. Now, my team runs Jira 
we went through a massive migration of the underlying platform earlier this year, and it went really well. But it would be disingenuous of me to say that our JIRA work led to n more conversions or an increase of y in shipment velocity. But it's totally appropriate for me to call out that we improved API response time by 12 to 15 percent. That's actually the graph that I'm showing here. Uh, in a related example, we have a modal on our website. Customers are asked to provide an email address to shop. We tested removing the modal and found the conversion rate went down, as did items per order and returning customers. Now, our value proposition is that when, with one item in the cart, an order might be approximately equal to competitor prices. With two, it's a little better than even. With three, you're getting a really great deal. We want to build a relationship with customers and encourage customers to get the most bang for their buck. It's best for them, it's best for us. And when we were thinking about how, about these high level business metrics and how to tie them back, you know, it, in our case, it would have been easy for us had we been in a single large Datadog account. But our FPNA and accounting teams require us to have community-based accounts for our major platforms, for example, AWS and Datadog. As a result, we had to jump through some additional hoops to get the relevant metrics into the other accounts. In some cases, it wasn't too hard. We opened a ticket, we showed them how, and it happened. In other cases, it was more difficult for teams to prioritize doing this work over existing feature commitments. And that's fine. Having that conversation is the important part, making sure that we have clear prioritization, and that we know when this work is going to get done. Oh, and give yourself the time and the opportunity to align the operational metrics at the right level. JIRA was a good example. It, would, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to try to try, tie that JIRA work back to shipment velocity, but there might be a downstream team who has a service that is built on top of, that requires JIRA as a, uh, as a dependency, and they might be able to show that that work was able to lead to some improvements to important business metrics. Ideally, you'll get to the point that you don't need to stress about a single instance going down. You can trust your load balancers and automations to remove unhealthy nodes, and you can bring in humans only when it's necessary. In an example, our privileged access management service provides a web UI and tunnels SSH connections for accessing certain secure ser services. We might configure an alert to notify us when the number of active connections drops below the baseline by a standard deviation for more than 20 minutes, or that the time to connect an SSH tunnel connection takes more than one standard deviation above the baseline for more than five minutes. When we get the alert, we'll look at the services events and we might see that an auto scaling event didn't execute or that we have a tunnel connector that's not completing connections and we need to manually kick off some remediation. It might be a little simplistic, but I'm going to draw an example from my life as a parent. I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old. This picture is a, little, a couple of years old, but they look more or less the same. We do tons of stuff outside together, camping, backpacking, hiking, riding bikes they're constantly testing the boundaries of decent behavior. Now, if I barked at them every time they did something wrong, they would learn pretty quickly to tune me out. I become noise, it's alert fatigue. So I have to give them this, the space to figure out and try the wrong thing. And then I circle back with them after the fact. We kind of review the event stream together and talk about how things could be better. And I'll alert if there's a good chance of a negative outcome, someone getting hurt or something getting broken. Even then, sometimes I keep my mouth shut and decide that the risk is worth the lesson being learned. I'm not quite sure that we've gotten there with computers, but we must be getting close. So finally, start with good service catalogs because knowing your services and having good expectations of them is key to empowering the teams to move. Back that up by giving high level metrics to align against, but give teams the flexibility to align at the appropriate level. And if I'm being totally honest, we're still on the journey. We will be for some time. I mean, hopefully forever. We'll be constantly uh, improving and reevaluating our past decisions. The last sl several slides were headed with what have we learned, but we're definitely still learning. Check back with me in a year and I'll tell you what we've learned. Hey, thanks a lot for coming. I hope this was useful.